The question is, is it a must to marry? So, as you are single right now, have you ever asked yourself, is it a must? Like, do you see it as, oh, like, I must marry? And do you have the that push to get married or you think that, oh, it's not really uh, that important? The scripture says, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Mm -hmm. I want that favor from okay. the Lord, so. That's so. Come on, come on. <laughs> and, and also, someone mentioned earlier, um, once you've found yourself, um, uh, your, your partner can uh, more or less compliment you. Mm -hmm. And I find beauty in building things together with, with someone. So, because of the scripture and because of building together, I have, I've had a question before, the question we asked to myself, but I am, I've rejected that question. I'm definitely, it's something I definitely want to do. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Is it the same for you, is it? I don't think I can compete with this also. <laughs> Personally, yeah. is a must for me. Personally, Why? yeah, I'm going to explain. Um... I feel like, as a human being, I'll just put it out there, you have feelings. And as a Christian, since sexual immorality is, is part of everyday life, but as a Christian, that is not encouraged. So I would get married to that person that God has for me so that I'm not sexual immoral. And then whenever I want to do whatever, I know where to go. Okay. So that is that is just but did not be fired. Yeah. You know, that is just yeah. it's like you're human. I'm a, I'm human, I'm a Christian. What do I do not to be sexually immoral? And the Bible also says that you know, you, it's an institution you, that's you been can established decide to abstain. Yeah. I my strength <laughs> is in there. <laughs> my strength right. is in there. I would be celibate until marriage, but until when? <laughs> yeah. All your life. I, I'm sorry. Some people can do it, but I'm, I'm just, guys, I'm just being real. I, you know, when I, I know truthfully that I can't do it, I will just, when it gets there, God pro provides me that person. We go on with it. Uh, you know that um, even the, uh, Christ Jesus that we are following didn't marry. Yeah, so uh, you can decide, okay, I'm not... I'm not marrying. Let, let, me squash, <laughs> let me squash that right <laughs> I was gonna say. Yeah. Let me squash that idea Be right Be like there. Christ. No, Christ didn't marry because Christ knew what he was coming to yeah, do, what he time had, he's going he to leave. So what, had, what if you know what I don't you're know when, to do? I don't know when I'm going to leave this earth. <laughs> That's he had his purpose, you know. I don't know when I'm going to leave this earth, but Christ knew. <laughs> exactly. He, he had, had a goal. He had a vision. He knew when he was coming, he had a plan. Written for, for him, yeah, or he brought his plan. So that idea, let's squash it there. Brother please. Paul didn't all, didn't know when he, he was living. You can see so the word he is, chose. He chose to so be. So you you yeah, can. He chose to be, and then yeah. yeah. Oh. Me, it's not always I want to, to marry. Like it got to a point. I you gave up. No, no, it's not. No, no, no. I didn't. You were kind of. No, no, no. I didn't. Like I, I yeah. Ask my shot. Like I ask my my yeah, Mike. Um, say so you are. You get to a point that you know. You ask yourself. You know, do I do I do I want this? And uh, it's not because I had. Um, I grew up in a family where they were not together. Things like that. It's you know. It's it's. I know it just came. Do I want? And um, I, for a bit, I was like, you know, I could, I, I, you know, I can live myself. You know, I'm, I'm okay and things like that. But then, as you know, I grew older, and uh, yeah, I didn't start praying. You know, early. Um, you know, I was, I was into sports. I was into school. You know, I had. It, it's, it's life was good. Life was, it's good now. So. But, um, it's better, it's better. <laughs> but you know, you, you don't think I didn't think of you know getting married until I guess I started working. So um, my focus was, and I'm that, um, that type of person where I do things. I don't multitask. Yeah, time. one thing, one thing at a time. 
So I'm in school, let me do school. I'm doing this, let me do this. So when I think I finished everything, I got to that point in life where I, as I said, like I saw myself in the future. And uh, yeah, it was in, it was in the future. I wanted to build something. I would have loved to build something with a partner, you know, a wife. Mm-hmm. And um, so that started from, you know, that thought that started from that vision, that dream. And then um, I didn't act on it straight away. You know, I started praying on and off. And then, yeah, on and off. But then as, yeah, as, as you grow older, it just get, you just start thinking. Mm-hmm. And then with prayer, you know, circumstances, God has a way of bringing the situation around you or bringing you into the situation. And, um, and yeah, it, it works out. It works out. So, um, yes, it's, it's, I don't think it's for everyone. Um, like, you know, it's, it's a choice, you know, so that is, you know, Paul made that choice and it's a choice that is personal mm-hmm. and, um, yeah, you have to be intentional in, uh, in the choice that you're making, like you yeah. know, everything else, let alone, you know, let alone getting married, you know, we make choices that are that are even less important you know like the 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 objective or the the goal is less important than marriage but we put effort in those things mm-hmm. let alone getting married wow can i yeah. ask a question please uh, to the experience married um <laughs> okay if someone does not get married is it a sin have they committed a sin it is not a sin for someone not to marry, as the brother said. However, that person must know that fornication is then a sin. So if you choose not to marry, you must choose to abstain from having any sexual contact with a woman or in any way. That makes it a sin. The yes. sin comes the in sin when comes you in do the you things do that do marriage do people are supposed, supposed to, to do. do. And you are not a married person. Yeah, that's what makes it a sin. But apart from (laughs) that, it's not a sin. So a man who has not been married before and the scripture says, finds favor from the Lord, does that mean he doesn't receive the favor? This so, is for the experience. It's for the experience. I'm sure there's people out there who want quite answers to the questions I'm asking. Yeah, I, I'm going to allow Auntie to no answer that. Uh, so it, for <laughs> men that don't marry, do, do they don't get the favor? That's what you're yeah, asking. Do they get the favor yeah. or not? Yeah. I want to know. But what uh, what I'm going to say is that uh, what I know is that they can live a good life and fairly, they can receive the blessing of God and everything. But then there is a particular favors that comes with marriage it's it's like benefits that come with certain type of work and job not everyone enjoys those benefits there is a favor that accompanies marriage itself and that is the favor that you receive there are other favors that god will give to you joseph was a single man but he found favor in the house of uh, pharaoh and potiphar and all of that so finding favor, God, you will find favor as a single person. But there is also favor that comes with marriage. And when you marry and you find a good woman, the good thing that when you find that they comes with that favor that you enjoy. Just to uh, ask the experience, our experience, uh, <laughs> personalities <laughs> among us, yeah, that the 10 years uh, married couples. Uh, what is the key for those of us who are three years and uh, three years is kind of still fresh, zero, no, negative. You are not zero yet. Negative one. <laughs> he is in the zero range because he's not just one year. Yeah. So those of us who are now coming, those of us who have be- just begun, what will you say is the key to a long-lasting marriage? I, I've always put my wife and my children above my needs. I, I used to host programs, so I would go and host someone's program without my wife. And when it's even 2 a.m., the London trains do not work to Luton after 12 or 1. I would charter the taxi and come back to Luton. 
So I've made my wife and my children my topmost priority. I make sure that uh, when my wife is out with her friends, I stay up till she comes back. So sometimes she comes back home around two in the morning and I'll still be waiting for her. I was not doing that intentionally, but she recently prompted me that, you know that each time I go out, you have the tenders you are waiting for me to come back before you go to bed. And I said, oh, really? <laughs> so I was something sweet that I, I really love. Which I wasn't, I, I, my own was, I don't want to go to bed for you to call me and say, come and open the door. Or come. <laughs> but it was something that I was doing that she loved. So the key, my one thing that I would say is, put your wife, your partner above your needs. That's, that's my, the key thing. Because if they are happy, it gives you more happiness and more joy. For me, everything I have ever done in lifetime, I have used Bible for it because I, I am blessed to have been in the church for quite a long time of my life. As a child, my mother took me and until now. So the word of God has always been a source for the things I do mm -hmm. in every place, even in education. When they teach a theory, I look at what scripture says about this theory. And when I get something, I attribute that to that theory. That theory then become a grounded thing in my mind. And then I excel. I've always done thing in a, things in a way that I made up my mind. I don't want to keep arguing with my husband. I, my house, I said to him that our house must be a place of peace and sanctuary. Like you're coming home, you must feel like you are coming home. It should be a place where you want to come, right? There are homes yeah. where people don't want to go. My home is nothing, nothing like that. We come home, we should be able to sit and talk about our day, have fun, talk about things, and never argue in front of our daughter. Those are principles that we made. So when I disagree with something that is done that I don't like, normally I like cleaning. Then I'll start cleaning a lot because it's done something <laughs> I do not like. <laughs> So I'll clean a lot. And when I finish, I'll go pray because the prayer is like one of the things that I, I will start praying and praying. So by the time I actually come back, I'm not as mad as I thought I would have been before that may have maybe if I'd reacted at that time. I, I, I think marriage has actually taught me not to react to things quickly as I used to. When I, I was someone, whoever you know me, you do something that I don't like, I tell you right there and then that this thing you've done, I do not like it and don't do it next time. I don't back out in telling you when you've done something that I don't like. Mm -hmm. But I totally refrain from doing that to my husband. Because I wanted him to have peace in our home. Because you can't all the time point out somebody's uh, weakness. I'm not saying you can't tell your, your partner the truth. But you should find the, the time, like Pastor say, normally, the environment. Yeah. And, you know, the mood... To say, to say what you want to say. Because to criticize someone, you, it must be constructive. Yeah. And you, the one thing that I always say to people, you can't walk up to me all the time and tell me, this is how you are, this is how you are, this is how you are. But never been able to tell me how good I am. Because no matter how bad I am, there are good things in me. And you should be able, the only time I will listen to you when you criticize me is that you've been able to compliment me before. Those little compliments then make it that criticism will come. Then you're able to tell the person that this is what... You are the greatest critic for your partner. But you're also the greatest person to exalt. And marriage shouldn't be... It, you're not fighting together. Mm. You're not fighting. You know, the married, the only th person you are competing against is the enemy. Because yeah. you should know that the enemy is uh, against, against that the marriage. marriage. So the person you're competing the only being you're competing against is the enemy. A lot of women look at uh, men who, have, who would have been wonderful partners to them. And because they feel that maybe the appearance of that person didn't really suit what is in their mind at the time being, they have just walked away and gone into something else. But you can make your husband to someone who everybody respects and loves. Mm. And a man is who they are, mostly because of their husband, their wife. 
So you as a wife must have that virtue to push your husband, present them in the in the most best and wonderful way that you can do. So I'm going to ask one more, one last question. It's for our experienced people. But then, <laughs> the experience, this one doesn't matter whether you've been experienced for 10 years or two years or zero. Or the negative. Zero to one or negative. <laughs> and my question is, what has been the most challenging part of your the marriage, like your marriage, and what did you learn about each other all from it?